Every year, Academy researcher Jack Dumbacher makes a return trip to Papua New Guinea. What we'd like to do is just is just walk around through the island and use our binoculars and we have a recorder so that we can record the bird songs and just find out what birds are here on the island. I love working in New Guinea because it's one of the last remaining wildernesses. We still have some of the largest expanses of tropical rainforest that are left anywhere in the world. Most of it's still relatively untouched. And as far as we know, there are no known human-caused extinctions there. And so it's a really pristine environment. It's a very beautiful place and it's still relatively intact. Jack's been to Papua New Guinea so many times he's lost count. Why does he continue to return? In recent years, I've become very interested in studying the islands off of New Guinea. They're close to New Guinea, they have a lot of the same elements, but they're slightly different as well. And islands are interesting because they're like little crucibles of evolution. And so you see rapid changes and really interesting things going on. Islands tend to be relatively fragile environments. That's why I want to go back to the islands of New Guinea, to get some idea of the pristine environment, to look at the evolution, but then also to see how people have been able to impact those islands and what impacts we've seen. So we're, we're here on, um, on Duchess Island and we came in in the morning and we've been bird watching here on the island for the entire morning. Jack's current research focuses on the islands of Milne Bay province. Many of the 600 islands have no human inhabitants, but each is home to various bird species. During recent trips, Jack has started gathering information about disease on the islands. We know that island species and birds that live on islands tend to be very susceptible to diseases, usually because they've never been challenged before. And so when new diseases are introduced, it can wipe out populations, so it can have huge conservation effects. Many of the diseases that we're interested in haven't hit New Guinea yet. While we're in the field, we're collecting blood samples and fecal samples from every bird that we handle. The samples return to San Francisco and go to Joe DeRisi's lab at UCSF. We can use these to understand what viruses they're carrying and whether there's these viruses may be having an effect on population structures and evolution. Viruses such as the avian flu that have implications for human health and well-being. So the hope is that if, if we can learn more about how these diseases are being spread, then we can prevent the spread of these diseases. These studies are sort of the genomic biology equivalent of these grand explorations that happened at the turn of the century when people cataloged the birds in the first place. Now we're cataloging the parasites of the birds. Here we go. So after more than 20 years of traveling to Papua New Guinea, Jack still has a lot to discover. It's really difficult to estimate how long it's going to take us to complete this work. If we set out today to just go survey those islands and we really, really worked hard, maybe we'd get a good idea of what's out there in three years or four years. But in my experience, what usually happens is as you go, you discover more and more and more things that you find interesting. It's a little bit after 11 o'clock, but we've already seen a lot of birds. I've ended up falling in love with New Guinea, and that's the place that I love to work the most, and I find it a fascinating place, and, and I have had the opportunity to study the weather and the birds and the trees and a little bit of everything, and I, I find that extremely rewarding.